So what am I looking at right now? Well, for one, it's a dumb terminal, and I'm looking at the SAC console on a Windows machine. What? <laughs> so I, I have a Linux machine, and I was administering uh, said Linux machine through this dumb terminal. I was using it to connect to my web server and do other silly things. Um, and I was like, well, I'm going to swap and put the uh, the old Unix machine, the old uh, old metal, on the other side of the room, and I'll put the Windows machine here. And I thought, surely getting a terminal server, um, running on a COM port on Windows, is something someone has done. Uh, it is, but surprisingly hard to get a good Google query for. So the SAC console is what you're looking for. Um, and let's talk about what that is. So over here we're looking at ISE. So the um, EMS and SAC toolset for Windows 10, this is what you're going to have to activate. So you're going to need to go to Features. Uh, and this specifically applies to machines past Windows 7, so Windows 10 and above. Um, for XP and 03, there's a command you can run here. I haven't done that. I'm not playing with machines that are XP or Windows Server 03. Uh, this box you're looking at is Windows 10. Uh, so what I ran is this BC edit, uh, BCD edit, EMS, current in quotes because I'm inside of ISE. If you're not in PowerShell, you can remove the quotes. That's in the documentation here on the uh, Windows page. Um, and I'll, I'll put this inside the description of the video. But basically, this enables EMS. And then I configure the port setting. This is your COM port. So if it's COM1, COM2, whatever. I'm using the onboard COM serial header. I have not tried this with USB, but I highly doubt it would work. Because I think this thing sets up... Uh, very early in the kernel's bootstrapping. So uh, it seems to start up before the OS even starts, and I'll, I'll talk about how that looks. Baud rate, I'm doing 9600 because I'm going to a physical terminal. You can probably go much faster if you're using a, a terminal emulator. So, um, focus. The next thing is, without these being set, it doesn't actually boot into this, this Windows with EMS. So... Uh, again, this is copy-paste from Microsoft Docs, but basically we're saying uh, display boot menu, timeout 15 seconds, and boot to EMS, yes. This is the important part. Without this line, nothing happens. If you do all of this, and you run all of these commands, and then you don't activate the EMS and SAC toolset, what you're going to see is when you boot the machine, you'll see the bootloader prompt on the serial terminal, and then nothing. So this top line is very important. That was the uh, that was the thing hanging me up. Anyhow, shut down at the end. We'll uh, restart things. So I've already done this on this host. I want to show you what the boot process looks like on Windows um, going through. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll reboot this box. Okay, I've told Windows to reboot. So at this point, here pretty soon, you're going to see SAC warn us that the console is going to die. There you go. And the computer has actually shut down. It's now at the BIOS menu, and it is loading itself back up. Here's the fun part. Whenever Windows boots, early on in the boot process, and I'm not going to have them next to each other. There you go. So this is actually being displayed. I'm going to move the cursor. That way it doesn't time out. Um, but this is being displayed over on the CR... <sighs> Sorry. This is being displayed on the, the actual uh, VGA... Uh, or DVI or HDMI output that's that's being shown to the user as well as the terminal, which is really cool. So let's go look at that. So see, uh, like for like display. So that's what's going on on the machine, and that's what's going on on the terminal. I'm going to push the enter key on the serial terminal, and notice we're going to boot to Windows 10 with EMS enabled. And the Windows boot is going. Right now we have the Windows logo, and look at that. Computer is booting. Now, uh, it's going to tell us in a second that the command shell will be active. So while we have the Windows flag and the spinning circle, we can't activate a shell just yet. And I'm not even going to worry about showing you that. There we go. Command is now available. So the system's got up to a point. We haven't even displayed a login window yet. Um, but we can actually interact with a shell now. So let's do question mark, right? So there are channels... And you can think of them like shells and screen, basically. And I hope the refresh rate is not too terrible on video. I'm sorry, I'm not a... I'm using a cell phone, so I don't have an ability to change the shutter on this, so please bear with me. Um, but this being said, I, I didn't find good documentation on this online, so I'm hoping this will help people who want to do what I'm doing, which is like, let's display... Um, let's, let's be able to, 
to uh, access our Windows machines through a serial terminal because we're weird. So I'm going to type CMD, uh, and that is going to activate the command prompt. And notice it says uh, channel dash question mark for channel help, but the channel has been created, and so it's command 0001. So again, it's like we need to use the screen equivalent here in SAC to switch over. So I'm going to do channel dash question mark, right? And so, hey, it says if you want to change to a channel by a number, do uh, SI and then the number. So if I do CH like that, there's a list of channels. So CH dash SI, right? And we're getting that from here. Switch to channel by its number. We want to go to channel one because that's command channel we just opened. This is so cool. I, mean, I, I wish Microsoft would tout how awesome this is. All right. So uh, it's telling us we're connected. Uh, to get to the next channel, it's escape tab. That's our escape sequence. Um, and then we're going to use any other key to view this channel. I'm going to press enter. And I can log in now. All right. I authenticated by putting a username, skipping the domain prompt, and then uh, putting a password. And that's it. And you know the cool part? Look at that. You have a PowerShell prompt. And check this out. I mean, tell me that's not cool. I'm interacting with a Windows system <clears throat> with a Windows system through a dumb terminal using a COM header on the on the motherboard. Um why is this not easier to enable? Like I, I get that it's a debug thing. For, for development on Windows, but holy cow, this could be handy um, for so many people having fun with their devices. And also, in the data center, I, I don't know why I didn't ever enable this on Windows machines in the data center, like physical Windows machines running on metal, but this is cool. Like, this should not just be a debug option. This should be a thing you can use anytime you want, because administering the system via PowerShell over serial, oh, this is really cool. And, and at this point, I can SSH into hosts, uh, or, or do whatever tickles my fancy. So I'm, I'm pretty happy here. Anyhow, I figured you'd enjoy that. So, uh, oh, and to get out, by the way, I can do exit. We'll show this to you. Get back to the uh, SAC prompt. And then uh, I'm going to do exit again. It didn't clear the screen all the way. All right, and so that takes us back. So we killed the shell. I can press any other key to continue, or I'm going to hit escape tab, uh, and that's going to get us back to the uh, is it escape tab. Yeah, there we go. Uh, escape tab. Uh, well then, Bob. Escape tab zero. I had to do escape tab zero, apparently. So, either way, I'm back at SAC now, and if I do this, um, something else you can do too, by the way, if you want to lock out the, uh, the command terminal, I'll show you here, there's another command here, it's lock. Lock access to command prompt channels. L O C K, which sounds kind of cool. Locked access to all command prompt channels. Eh, kind of fancy, eh? Anyhow, back at the stack prompt. So there you go. That's some cool stuff. Have fun with that. I hope you guys enjoy it. Bye.